Good morning. We are so glad you joined us for worship today. A lot of announcements. Just real quickly, I want to say thank you to all of you who uh, lived out his love yesterday in many real tangible ways. You see some of the pictures on the monitors. I, the most conservative count is about 81 people uh, participated. And uh, some of the pictures on the monitor, you really do make a difference in people's lives. And we just really thank you so much for that. There's uh, the group picture in the breakfast, at least, and some people joined us after the breakfast on the job sites, and so what a blessing uh, you guys were to not only uh, the schools, but to some of our individual members who we built two ramps for and uh, over at the nursing home. In fact, speaking of the nursing home, there are some uh, bags, goodie bags that they put together for nursing home residents. They didn't give them all out. They, they still had some remaining, so they're back there in the narthex. If you have a loved one, that uh, is in a nursing home and you want to take one to them or have a friend or whoever. You just want to make a special trip yourself. Please grab some and, and take them with you and uh, deliver them to, to some of your um, uh, friends, family, and so forth. Again, they're out there. Uh, again, thank you for everything you do. Uh, a couple of other quick announcements. If you'll notice in the um, bullets, if you open up, there's quite a few things listed there like graduation Sunday coming the Sunday before um, uh, Memorial Day. You see that May 19th. Then on uh, the junior youth and boys and junior youth girls activities coming up. One of the boys was rescheduled. Make note of that if you have a, a junior high uh, boy that might be affected by that. The dinner crew coming up in two weeks going uh, to Big Daddy's. And then the, the last thing on in that section I want to really highlight is the college and career group. They are going this Thursday to Backpacks of Catawba County, uh, but they want to invite you guys too if you'd like to join them, uh, anybody of any age, because you can see firsthand the need in our community uh, and get to participate in what Catawba County uh, and the corner table specifically does to help make that happen. You can see that on the uh, bulletin on the left-hand column of the inside section. It's there uh, on your bulletin. And then, of course, the front page, a reminder about the blood drive coming up this Tuesday. If you haven't signed up, you can either online or in the back on the table or the North X cabinet there. The last thing is um, Alice and Mike Lawson used to be members here. Uh, they are now over at St. John's. They were in a very serious car accident. Uh, I, would, I would classify it as non-life-threatening but life-altering, where they both have multiple broken bones and uh, some internal injuries as well that have been corrected. Some folks this morning asked if we were going to take a, a door offering. Uh, if anybody has uh, uh, extra mon money or a check already written, I know one gentleman had a check written. Uh, if you want to give a donation to that, we can take that up and we'll send it on to them. Their daughters are in college and traveling back and forth to, to visit them. Uh, they're at two different hospitals. One's in uh, Winston, one's in Charlotte, so there's a lot of out-of-pocket expenses to go visit their parents. Uh, so if you could help with that, that would help. And of course, that's not even counting the medical expenses that will eventually come. Uh, but uh, if you're willing and able, we, I'm sure we'll probably do something again later. But if you have uh, opportunity today and want to do that, you can. And you can just put on a little envelope market, say, uh, uh, for the Lawsons, if you'd like. that. Just put it on a little envelope in front of you. And we'll make sure that we, we get that to them. Uh, I think that's all. Oh, my boss, my other boss, says dishes. If you brought dishes yesterday, by the way, thank you. The food was awesome uh, morning and evening. But there's some dishes in the parasol. So the parasol will be unlocked. If you brought dishes and you didn't get a chance to pick them up yet, they are in the parasol. All right. Well, let's, uh, as the song we led into said, that we are here to worship. And if you would, just go ahead and stand and greet your neighbor as we begin to worship our Lord. Good morning.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. From Revelations, worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and sight and honor and glory and blessing. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. We go to God in confession using Psalm 30. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you healed me. O Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol. You restored me to life from among those who go down to the pen. In repentant faith, we come before our Lord in confession. Almighty God, we confess to you that we are by, by nature. We have searched for you where you never promised to be and have failed to recognize you as you come to us today as our risen Redeemer. We have sinned in thought, word, and deed and have been reluctant to be your witnesses and to do your will. For the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray, forgive us. Sing praises to the Lord, O you, his saints, and give thanks to his holy name, for his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. To you, O Lord, I cry, and to the Lord I plead for mercy. Hear, O Lord. And be merciful to me, O Lord, be my helper. Beloved in the Lord, God has heard our confession. And because of the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has answered with good news and revealed himself as our Savior and our Redeemer. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing the hymn of praise.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, through the sacrifice of your Son on the cross to the empty tomb, you revealed Christ risen in the life-changing mercy and love for us and all mankind. Grant to your faithful people a daily recognition of his victory over sin, death, and the grave, that we might serve you in confident joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And do we have any children that would be willing to come forward and for a children's message? All right, you'll have to come back for the late service or watch it online uh, to hear the children's message later. So let's turn to the scriptures, and we start by inviting you to hold your Bibles high and repeat after me. This is my Bible. It is God's Word to me. I will read it. I will study it. I will believe it. For it is God talking to me. And in today's first reading is from Acts chapter 9. We hear two different uh, resurrection appearances. Uh, one from the Apostle Paul in his account from Acts chapter 9. And then we'll hear again from uh, John chapter 21. But Acts 9, 1 through 22 first. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground. When he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days, he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. He, the Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on straight street and asked for a man from Tarsus named Saul for he is praying in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him and to restore his sight Lord Ananias answered I, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem and he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name but the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus, and once he began to preach in the synagogues and that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on this name? 
And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priest? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful, baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. And the gospel lesson is from the gospel of St. John, the 21st chapter. John 21, verses 1 through 14. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but his disciples did not recognize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. And when they did... They were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. And Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is the gospel of the Lord.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Did I not put my sermon slides over here? Would you go to the 1030 service and grab those for me, please? I knew there was something I was forgetting to do today. Well, we'll get started, and we'll catch up eventually, I guess. Um, or I could pull it up on my phone, too. Watch this. Huh. <laughs> they didn't make it into either service. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I knew I brought them in here. Anyway, this past week, I had the privilege to attend the Southeastern District's Professional Church Workers Conference, and I did all my slides there, and something got lost in translation. Uh, but this year, the theme of our conference was uh, worker wellness, both physical and mental wellness. And one of the things that they talked over and over about was being authentic in our interactions with others. And I know it's tempting to look at myself and look at Pastor Holler and see two men who've been called to serve you here as your pastors and to think that we have it all together. I'm going to let you in on something that shouldn't come to you as a, as a surprise. We don't. We don't have it all together. At least I don't. I'm not going to speak for you. Uh, he's shaking his head no that he doesn't have it all together either I'm like you in so many ways I have all the feelings I get depressed I can feel isolated and lonely and even exhausted especially after yesterday but let's get real for a moment and you don't have to raise your hands but how many of you feel that way too right the pressures of life are overwhelming life has exhausted you you don't feel that great and you go to bed and you're going to do it all over again tomorrow and what's more the new troubles seem to pop up before we can deal with the laundry list of old ones inevitable routine beyond your strength and control it's just the same old same old and i've often wondered if that's not how peter felt after jesus crucifixion because you would think that the apostle peter would be just a little bit more excited I mean, after all, he witnessed one of the greatest miracles to ever take place when he walked in the empty tomb on that first Easter morning. The risen Lord appeared to him and his fellow disciples in a locked room that same evening where he saw the nail marks in Jesus' hands and the wounds in his side. And he was overjoyed as Jesus spoke with them and blessed them with the Holy Spirit. Peter had a nagging problem, and it was one that probably kept him up at night, too. Do you remember the night that Jesus was put on trial, and in the morning, early morning hours, right before Jesus was crucified? He turned his back on Jesus. He denied that he knew Jesus three times, even though he swore that he would never betray or disown his teacher, his friend. And yet his fear and his frailty took over. He was a traitor, a disappointment, a failure. So what was Peter going to do after Jesus showed up alive and well? Yeah, it was great, of course. Jesus was alive, but he was still a denier. He was still a disappointment. Maybe Peter felt like he had to go back to that same old, same old too. You know how that feels, right? You revert back to the same old behaviors because you feel like you have no other option. Well, even Peter went back to what he knew. He went back to fishing. John 21, we read a moment ago, tells us that Simon Peter Thomas called the twin Nathaniel of Galilee, of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, the sons of thunder, right? And the two other disciples were together and Simon Peter said, hey, I'm gonna go fishing. After all, he was a fisherman before Jesus called him, right? Well, he may have thought, Jesus, you picked the wrong man, bud. I've denied you. I've disappointed you. At least I could always go back to what I know, go back to fishing. So he went back to the boat and he went to the nets. And sometimes I wonder if we ever feel that way about our future. We wonder if our life is useful. We're stuck in a rut. We can't change. Even worse, we feel like we've failed and have no hope of a second choice, much less a third or a fourth chance. So either you simply lose hope and go back to the everyday motions and drift back to that same old destructive pattern, or perhaps you're not trying to go back 
to your relationships at all. Maybe you're reverting to getting angry too easily or stepping back into addiction or you end up hurting yourself or hurting the people around you. And it all feels just so inevitable. You wonder if your life even matters. I think we've all been that overwhelmed before. In this sinful and broken world of ours, it may feel overwhelming now, but today Jesus is letting you know that even in the midst of your own frailty and failure, he is working in your life. With his forgiving and gracious love, Jesus is calling to you from the shoreline and drawing you close. He renews you. He forgives you. And he uses your life to make a difference in this world. Not just any difference, but his difference. The resurrected Lord can make a do-over, a real possibility, just like he did with those disciples that day. The Gospel of John goes on to say, just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet his disciples did not know that it was Jesus. So he said to them, children, do you have any fish? And they answered him, no. He said, cast the net out on the right side of the boat, you'll find some. So they cast it out, now they were not able to haul it in, because there were 153 fish. Kind of an odd little detail from John's gospel, but 153. In other words, Jesus spoke, Jesus directed, and Jesus blessed. And those fishless fishermen who couldn't even do fishing were suddenly in the middle of a fish frenzy. And my friends of Christ, today we can live our lives trusting in that same risen Savior who has done and will continue to do something very special in our lives. In fact, to all of those who trust in Jesus, your life is a work of art in his hands. Isaiah the prophet reminds us in Isaiah 64, verse 8, Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the potter. You are the potter, we are the clay. We are all the work of your hand. How many have seen the movie Mr. Holland's Opus? Okay, just a smattering. Um, it's in my top 10 favorite movies of all time. It's a story about a talented musician uh, and composer who decided to get a day job so he could pay the bills and spend time with his family. Uh, those of you who are teachers knows how impossible that is some days. But the, the main character, Glenn Holland, uh, becomes a high school music teacher after at 30 years old. And he thought this was just gonna be a temporary gig, something that he could do while he composed his music and eventually come up with his magnum opus. Now to Mr. Holland, teaching was a means to an end. His real dream was to write and direct that, his own orchestral composition that would be played around the world and give him fame and fortune. Well, that temporary gig became permanent. You see, life got in the way. He started to care deeply about his students. He fought for the music program. He advocated for kids in need, and he taught them about the rich and wonderful beauty in the arts. With a growing family at home and an extended family at school, his life was pretty full. Some nights he would sit and try to compose at his desk and work on his com composition, but he was tired. And time was, after all, short. And then after 30 years, his orchestral work sat in a drawer, complete, but unpublished and unplayed. Well, then there was a terrible development in Mr. Holland's life. The music program was suddenly cut from the budget, just like that. His 30-year teaching career was now over. He packed up his desk, feeling like he hadn't mattered at all. But when the day of his retirement came, he was ushered into the school auditorium, and it was packed with his former students. After hearing about Mr. Holland's dismissal, the former students decided to surprise their beloved teacher in a wonderful way. They pulled out their instruments and secretly practiced playing Mr. Holland's magnum opus. And when he walked into the auditorium on that last day, they asked him to be the conductor of his own musical debut. Even the governor of the state, a former student, played in its orchestra that day. You see, Mr. Holland realized that his magnum opus was not a musical composition. His greatest work was the investment, the care that he took in the lives of his students 
and his family. He had felt like his life was a waste, but in reality, it was a beautiful work of art. And that's exactly what Jesus is showing Peter. Peter thought that his life was an irretrievable failure. But Jesus showed up. And he let Peter know that even his ordinary life was a beautiful work of art in Jesus' hands. Peter was a fisherman who couldn't even catch fish. But with Jesus in his life, everything changed. The Gospel of John continues the report by telling us that when Simon Peter heard that it was Jesus, he threw himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in the boat dragging the net of fish. And when they got out on dry land, they saw a charcoal fire in place with some fish laid out on it and some bread. And Jesus said, bring me some of the fish that you've caught. So Simon went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of fish, 153 of them. See, Peter had seen this kind of thing happen before. In Luke chapter 5, Jesus provided another miraculous catch of fish. And after that miracle, Jesus called Peter to follow him. He said, from now on, you'll be fishers of men. And even now, Jesus was not writing off Peter because of his failures. Instead, he was calling him back to himself. With his merciful forgiveness and empowering grace, Jesus was making a do-over possible in Peter's life. A life that would be graced as a work of art in Jesus' hands, lived by faith towards God and in fervent love toward one another. See, Peter and Mr. Holland are not the only ones with these kinds of possibilities. In Jesus, redeemed and forgiven by him, your life is also a graced work of art. In Christ, your life can be brand new because he did the ultimate do-over of all time. And he did it for you. He fulfilled all of God's law perfectly in your place so that you not only receive his gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation, but you then become a vessel to others. Even when you don't realize it, Jesus can use you to make an impact for him. Even if you haven't achieved your hopes and dreams, Jesus can use your life to make a beautiful difference in the lives of others for his sake. Your life is a work of art in the redeeming and gracious hands of Jesus. Jesus meets you where you're at for his purpose. Whether you're a stay-at-home mom, a factory worker, a business person, a nursing home resident, a teenager, an 80-year-old, Jesus makes your life a work of art. And how is this possible? Because your life was purchased with the precious blood of Jesus. That's why Peter jumped out of the boat and swam ashore. Because Jesus was making a do-over happen for him. I'm not going to step into next week's text, but you'll see next week how Jesus forgives Peter and how he sends him out to be that work of art in other people's lives. After all, he was guilt-laden guilt and stressed out, all because he had denied Jesus so long ago. He swore three times that he never even met the man, Jesus. And that failure and that pain would continue to haunt him. And Jesus steps in, calls him, and Peter jumps in and swims ashore. So if you feel like a failure, if you feel like you've ever wasted all of your second chances, if you ever look at your life and feel that you can't be much good to anybody for anything, hear the restoring words of Jesus for you. That he took the consequences of your sin and your failures as he hung on the cross and received God's punishment of death. He broke the bonds of your crippling failures when he rose again from the dead on that first Easter morning. The living Savior is proof that your life in him is brand new. By faith in him, there's the gift of that gracious do-over. He calls you by name. 
He forgives you of your every sin and then sends you out to serve him. That's a do-over. It's a gift, and it's waiting for you today. He meets you where you're at. He meets you in your frailty and your fear and your doubt. And he lets you know that you have been forgiven and that your sins are washed away. You had to get a do-over. Your life is just beginning as Jesus' own blessed work of art to bless others now and forever. Amen.
Would you please stand as we profess our faith together? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and ascended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident in this God, we approach his throne of grace. Blessed Lord, you appeared to the disciples showing yourself again as the one and only risen Redeemer. You forgave Peter his betrayal and appointed him to feed your sheep. Forgive our sins. Restore us to your service and bless all that we do that it be to your glory. Risen Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. You turned Saul from an enemy of your kingdom into your servant and sent him as an apostle to the Gentiles. Turn our hearts of rebellion and resistance to your word and spirit and lead us to be bold witnesses of your mercy in words and in deeds. Risen Lord in your mercy. You set apart nations and governments for the protection of people, for justice and for the promotion of virtue. Raise up good and honest leaders here and everywhere and guide them on the path of peace for the benefit of all. Especially this day, we lift up before you the conflict taking place right now in Israel and Iran. Risen Lord, in your mercy. You deliver the sick from their illnesses, the wounded from their pain, the grieving from their sorrow and the dying from their fear. Especially today, we lift up before your glorious throne, uh, Joe Dellinger, who will be having surgery tomorrow, for Alice and Mike as they recover from their serious injuries, for, for um, Don, Paula, Judy, Leanne, Catherine, Virginia, Sean, Tom and Nancy, Glenn, Jim, Ann, Possum, Judy, Patsy, Roberta, Elaine, Ted, Ann, and Mary Lou. For our friends and family like uh, Jeremy, and Jamie, JV, and Tommy, Courtney, Landon, Aiden, Tim, Jeff, Jan, and Mike. Bless all people according to their need with grace sufficient to carry them through their day of trouble and sustain them in faith. Strengthen them in the promises that are ours in your love. Risen Lord, in your mercy, and you bestow upon us the resources we need for this body and life, and you equip us with eternal life. Grant that in our baptismal vocation we live for more than the moment and use the resources entrusted to us for your eternal purpose. Risen, Lord, in your mercy. And finally, Lord, we pray for uh, the grieving, the family of uh, Babe McCray. We pray that you would surround them with your love and your pro resurrection promises and continue to draw them ever closer to you, and even to one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Risen Lord in your mercy. And finally, we give you thanks for the gifts of your uh, life, new life in Christ, but also new life on this side of the womb. We're giving you thanks for Daphne, uh, and we pray that you would continue to bless her and her mother as they continue to heal from the birthing process and continue to adjust to being life at home together. Risen Lord in your mercy. 
into your hands, O Lord. We commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the wonderful mercy of Jesus as we pray together the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Peace and serve the Lord. Thanks. Be to God.